Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? It's the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. We are Platinum Producers Architect Beats. I am your host, Juggernaut. I am Mike Trauma D. And collectively, we are the Platinum Production Crew Architect Beats. If it's your first time here, welcome. Uh, basically, every week, what we do, we get together and we talk about uh, just different situations, different things in the music industry um, as it relates to production, artist stuff, contracts. So just giving you different resources and different types of game to artists and producers that are coming up. And today, well, let me go back a little bit of housekeeping. If you if you haven't already clicked the subscribe button, hit that subscribe button and notifications and make sure that you, you get the uh, notification when our stuff is going live, etc. So today, I want us to talk about, um, it's been a real crazy week in terms of like the content that we've been posting, we get a lot of feedback, but I wanted us to talk about specifically today for producers and um, artists trying to get placements. I wanted to talk about some of the ways that you can get more placements for your music in terms of how to prepare for submissions, um, some of the things to do to kind of make sure that to increase your chances of getting picked up because you know, there's a very, very, very competitive uh, feel. So you definitely need to come with your A game if you're looking to get placements with artists that are signed or even unsigned independent artists because you're competing for a certain amount of slots on a project. So with that, let's get into this. So, you know, from from our experience, what is like the the some of the first things that we need to do when we're talking about, okay, an artist comes up and says, hey, I'm working on my album. I'm working on my project. I need beats. Producer, send me beats. What should we be doing at this point? Well, I think, um, and this is something that we've done, you know, is be proactive. Um, and as a producer, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you're if you want to take this thing seriously as a producer, you want to be a student of the game. Now you're going to ask, well, what does that mean? That means taking the time out to, to, to study. Study uh, um, music, study uh, production, study uh, the artists that you want to work with, you know, what kind of records that they, 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 they like or they sound good on, tempos, sounds. Uh, you know, Jug, we used to do this all the time. We listened to production and we used to listen to, to really spend, spend, we get together, actually literally spend a day or we just spend time just you know, going through production and really listening to how the kick sounds, the snare sounds, uh, what, what, what music uh, uh, elements they're using. So I would say the first thing always, and, and this is before even an artist approaches you, you know, and I want to get to the real beginning, is to really spend time studying uh, the sound, music, artists, and especially the artists you want to work with, you know, what kind of music that they sound good on, that they like to take, they like to use, and, and start working from there. That's that's first. Um, as far as when an artist actually approaches you, um, you know, you, you want to definitely, of course, if you get their their uh, contact information or email information, that's a plus. You know, a lot of times you could go online and they'll send off a tweet or um, IG with their, uh, their beat email. Now, one thing to understand is a lot of people may get this beat email, so you're going to be in direct competition with half the world. Half the all the world. The whole world um, got it now. So now, so now it's like you have to figure out how are you going to stand out. What things can you do to increase your chances of getting a placement? And first of all, you know, you only could do what you have control over. You know. There's a lot of other things that happen in the background that you're going to have no control over. But the things you do have control over is first making sure your production is as tight as it can be. You know, you want to make sure sonically it sounds good. It's at tip top quality and that it's in a tone that can compete with what's out there in the world currently. You want to make sure it sounds uh, audible. You know, it sounds radio ready. Um, we want it to sound as if, okay, the artist has space to actually do music on. It's not cluttered. It's sequenced in a way that they. it's obvious that, okay, this is where the artist raps or this is where it sings. 
you know it's it's set up in a way to make it easy for the artist okay um another uh tip is um a lot of major artists have uh a lot of upcoming artists around them you know this is a nice uh trick i don't want to say it's a trick but um strategy. it's a good it's a strategy it's, it's a strategy. good way to to implement yourself into their system you know a lot of artists have um uh, upcoming artists around them you know in their own camp so um what you can do what we've done is we reached out to all of these these artists and we've submitted beats to these artists a lot of these artists are not being um people are not paying attention to them they're paying attention to the main guy the 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 one with the major deal everybody's shooting for them but what about the guy the b artist or the c artist that's attached to that independent label hit them up sometimes there's 10 of them five of them you know a good amount of you know hit them all up you know and then you know what we've done is we found we found ourselves making beats for an entire community of independent a whole, artists a whole crew and, and right that's that's a the whole crew and then you you, you don't know. even realize that the because the crew influences the top tier artists right and i don't what think happened, people really realize that and what happens is you start being the talk of an inside the camp you know well, who'd you get that beat from oh i got it from market tech beats oh, okay I, let me let me you know and it on top of that they will send beat your beats also to to their partners also you know so that's happened to us plenty of times where we've sent out beats um to one c artist and he, he got what he got from it and then he sent out to his partners who are c artists also signed to the to label they took something and when the third c artist sees a and b team the, the other two Oh, uh, let me let me see what you what what they got too, and it, and it actually goes around like that. So, um, that's a nice strategy. Also, it gets upstreamed when they want to feature. Um, they look to you know the the main artist, and you find out that you got a a C artist featuring an A artist, you know, or you can flip it around A artist and C artist together, and together. now you got that credit. No. Now you got that credit, and right. I don't think that now people don't look at that as saying like you know they don't want to count those placements. It's like okay, we just gunning for the top guy, right? And the top guy, like you said, always has um, a crew. Um, most 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 artists are very ambitious in having their own labels, um, and they're 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 traveling with their guys, right? If we're talking about maybe a Dirk and a King Vaughn, or you know what I mean, or like. These these kind of situations where you got different people who are around the main artist and they become, you know, prominent in their own right, given right. the right amount of time. But your your job, and we've been saying this before, is to is to strategize and making sure that you position yourself and catching the artists as they ascend. If you if if you wait too long to catch somebody before they get hot, once they get hot, you can't you, you can it's almost impossible to have access to them. So the key right. is to get them on the ground level. And then, you know, typically what happens is that if, if the main guy really has a lot of steam and he has a lot of things going on, he's going to be able to trickle those resources back down to the other guys and right. that enhances their chances right. of getting on. And I don't think people really look at that kind of dynamic. Yeah. And if you're already um, doing production for these artists, you're coming along for the ride. You know, as long yep. as you're positioned properly, yep. you know. So I would I would say always, you know, don't always run after the the main artist. You know, don't always run after the main artist, the A, the superstar artist. Don't always run after that because, you know, like I said before, everybody is 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 is, is running to that artist. You know, don't forget the 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 artist that's hasn't hasn't made it to that to that level yet. You know. Those are the artists that a lot of people are sleeping on. Those are the artists that's, and in a lot of cases, those are artists, the main artists is actually going back to for their inspiration and their creativity. Some of those so quote unquote C artists and B artists, you know, right, the A artists right, is going to them. Writing for, those hooks on the low. For writing them, right. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, a lot of times you want to make sure you infuse yourself in that, in that situation because they're going to, the A artists is actually going back to those guys anyway. So, you know, 
again, you know, it's been uh, a strategy of ours to to always include, you know, working with, with those guys. Um, and, you know, it could only go up from there, you know. Um, what happens when the C artist gets a deal, you know, he become he move he he moves up. He becomes He's no longer a C artist. No he moves C up artist. to be a B artist and so forth. And what we don't and what people don't also not looking at is that the C artist has a, the access to the A artist. So let's say you're 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 in the again, you're part of the crew. If you're gonna be around the A artist, the A artist is gonna be around other A artists. Right? Right. So that C artist is still developing relationships with other A artists that may become features, which may help that artist to propel themselves again. So again, you're looking at the, you don't, the artist has a network and access. And I think that's the, probably one of the most important things is the relationships and the access that the C artist may have to not only that A artist in the crew, but everyone that the other A artist comes in contact with, because most likely they're going to be in the rooms with those folks in those sessions, you know, time and time again, and then creating the relationships. Right. And, 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 you know, not to get things confused when, when I say A artists and B artists and C artists, it has nothing to do with uh, quality or whatever. It's just the, the level of where they are as far as if they are a major artists, if they, if they're mid-level as far as, you know, they put out music and it's been successful as far as gold or platinum or just, they just got a brand new deal and they, they're still moving up, up, right. up the chain. So, um, so right. So let's, let's get, so I'm good yeah. to clarify that, that it's not that we're looking at it from a talent standpoint. It's just who is where in terms of their deals, um, who has the finance behind them, who has the momentum. Right. That's, that's yeah, so the thing. Major deal, indie deal, um, or who signs or who, or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, so, Again, I would say um, a good strategy is to, to don't forget to see artists. Don't forget those artists. Um, work with them. Um, you know, they're a lot easier to get placements with. Um, and, you know, those are the artists that you could actually grow with and grow into a bigger situation with. So don't forget those guys. So, so when we're talking about now, you, you're putting together the beats. Mm-hmm. Or or let's let's even reverse that because when we say let's you, you got to do your homework, got to you got to like you said before we got to study all of the situation as far as, um, I don't think enough folks say okay I'm just going to send the beats that I got, all right? Like I, I do these beats, I'm just going to send these beats, and then they say they don't get any feedback, but it's like okay, did you actually listen to what the other artist really that the artist really is into? Did you listen? Right. Did you listen to that? Did you listen to the tempos? Did you listen? Did you try to look at what the tempos were? Did you try to see what the the um the key that he likes? You know, the, do they like piano joints? Do they like guitar joints? Like, did you really listen to that? Do 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 they like intros on their music, or do they don't want intros on their music? Are they rhyming right. sixteen bars? Are they rhyming twelve bars? Like, what is it that you? What are you finding when you go and you dive into the artists that you want to get into? So. We're always suggesting you got to do your homework if you want to enhance your chances of getting picked up uh, or getting placed. You have to know what's going on and you have to study what's going on. You just can't be in your own world and say, "Okay, you know, I just make beats." And listen, what you make for yourself is different from what people want to rap on. Yeah, like that. Like also, it's like you know, don't don't spend forever like doing all these long on our intros. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, you know, you know, the artist gets in gets in the room, and it's like, let's get to it. You know, um, often when I'm I'm making a sequence to 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 send out beats, you know, I actually I actually spend time like placing which beat to go first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and I and I I play it, and I run it, and I sit there and I play it through. And I'll spend time saying, okay, let me move this around. Let me put this over here. Let me put this here. Now, nah, the second joint got a piano with I don't want to put the, 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 the third joint on the piano because it sounds like that one. Let me move that one around. Like, I'll make sure that each joint has its own sound, but it's consistent and quality-wise, and it fits the artist's lane, you know. Um, so that's very, to, 
you know, that's a strategy that I use often when sitting down and just compiling the beats. You know, I compile all of it and then I'll sequence them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And in that ten, I'll spend time moving them around because I'm trying to envision when they're sitting down or they're going through their vibe, how each of them is going is going to hit. Also, another thing is a lot of times when they said send send it, send the beats, there are people who are sending links. The sending links to a folder a lot of times is like an extra step, and you're better off sending MP3s attached. Send your MP3s attached so that when they open up the email, they can click, click the play button and they can get it rocking. Also, if they may not have been in a studio, they may want to open it up on their phone or whatever the case is. They could, you know, click play right there. When you're sending folders, it really limits where it could be played. Um, you, it's taking another step. They got to click in. They got to open up another folder. They got to do all of this stuff just to listen to your beat. Make it as easy um, as as you can for them to just be able to open your your, your email and and play the beat right out. Uh, and and I think that's 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 real key. When when we when you say that right, that, mm -hmm. because you know, it's funny because like when I, when I when I when we were run, coming down here to Atlanta and then. I'm, I'm running around and I'm like, yo, um, yo, uh, put these beats together, right? <laughs> I'm like, yo, I like, yo, Mike, put these beats together because, right. you know, because you know, historically in, in in our situation, it's like you've you've always had that skill of, you know, how to line it up, you know, and and we we were in a situation where every time we went into a room, you know, you you had gotten. You know, if we put ten, we would get something off. It would, it would right. always be a, a ratio. If we put ten beats together, we were always coming out of that session with something being placed one, two, three tracks, right. always at a time. So when you got that kind of hit ratio, it's like, okay, I'm I'm not touching that. I'm like, you do that, right? I'm not, I'm like, right, I'm, right, I'm, right, I'm, right. like I'm not not dealing with that at all. But um, when you said put the joints into the, the email, because I, you you'll hear conflicting information out here that says, hey. Give me a folder, right? And 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 I, I I understand the logic behind okay the folder now. If you have if you have ten joints, we know ten joints ain't fit in one email. All right, so I'm gonna tell you this. This is how this is how I do it. Right. First first when you're you're, you're sequencing your beats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, these are the beats. The name of the beat, the name of the beat, you make sure you you label it zero one. Zero two zero three, but the name of the record zero one, the redeemer zero two, you know knockout zero three, so that when they open it, it lines up zero one two three lines up the way that you 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 want to play. That's first of all. Another tip is what I like to do is I go into iTunes and I I shrink the quality, I shrink the the size of the record so that it can fit in these emails. So I could put five beats in one email because a lot of times these emails cannot hold a certain amount of beats. So what I'll do is I'll go into the iTunes and I'll go to custom and format and I will change, uh, I'll make a copy of the beat and I'm able to change it so that instead of the beat being a, 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 a 10 megabyte beat, I'll cut it down to maybe five, you know, four or five, five, four point eight, five. And what that does, it it, it 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 compresses the beat down to a to a small. It doesn't take away too much of the uh, uh, the quality, um, but, but it, small, it allows a smaller file size. It's a smaller file, so now I'm able to fit five beats into to one email. So I could send email one and email two, five and five, and send that out, and you got everything there. You know, so there's no need to send a folder and then having to use a zip file and all of this crazy stuff that just makes the, the process more lengthy. The trick is to make it as easy and quick as possible so that the artist could get to it. Um, a lot of times it's not even the artist, it's the engineer, and the engineer just wants to be able to open the email, click play, or just drag the drag the um the MP3s yep. into the joint and rock out, you yep. know. And, and, and you want to label your BPMs in your track if you can as well, yeah. because some artists are recording on their own, mm -hmm. and so, and some are not really good at looping. 
Right. <laughs> We've seen that in the past, even though some right. people can do it better now, but not everybody is really good at using that. But having your BPMs in there, it helps to kind of get your music, like you right. said, get right to it. Right. So you, you label it right after the name. So it'd be like zero one point, and then it's the name of the record, and then the uh, the BPM. So label it right on the on the on it. Also, what we like to do also is we like to use the iTunes. You could go in and actually put the credits inside the beat. Uh, we would put a logo on the actual um, beat, on the so beat. that when you open it in certain uh, software, you actually see that it's Architect Beats. You actually see these things, and all these things that just helps to when you know, to shuffle everything that's going on, it helps to identify, okay, the, that producer did that record. It makes it easier. The thing is, you want to make this stuff, this process, very easy for the artist, engineer, executive, to know who did the beat, to get the beat done, know who did the beat, and to be able to contact you. So those, those, are, those are things you have to think about. You know, yes, you're doing the creative thing. You're doing the creative thing when making a beat. Well, you also got to think about, okay, how can I streamline this? How can I make this thing, this process a whole lot easier for the artist and for the artist to get back at me? I think that's, I think that's really the key. Like you said, trying to make it easy for the artist to listen, easy for the artist to record, um, easy for the artist to get back in contact with you once everything is said and done. Um, so I want to pivot a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we're, we're talking about how to get more placement folks. If you're just joining into, into this, into the conversation is how to get more placements for your music. Um, how long should the tracks be? I know what I, I know what we have, but I, I, I always pose this question out there, but you know, we tend to have tracks that have intros two two verses, I'm sometimes a third, but not always. Um, you need to make sure that you have at least two verses worth of music. Music. Right? You want it radio record, ready, already ready. ready. Yeah. You know the days of snippets is over. <laughs> you know, uh, you want to make it make sure that you have enough for a song. You know, from start to finish a song, and and you want the average song to be about three minutes. You know, three twenty. You know, right. somewhere around there. 3.30, you know, nothing really longer than that. You don't really want to go into the, the four-minute world. You know, you want to be around the, the, the 3.30, and that's enough to have um, um, about three three hooks and uh, two verses, you know. Um, yeah, if, if anything is longer than that, you know, you just make sure you have your BPM so that the engineer could always just, just um, repeat it and it's, it's on timing. But not only that, like you said, it, it with the longer with the longer um, songs, you're also increasing your file size, so it goes back right. to that, that other problem exactly that you can't fit as many songs back into your into your email into your, as you, that you email. need to have. The right. other the other thing that I would that I that I always um, that I always liked in terms of when we were reaching out to these folks and you know we're sending these tracks out to these guys and you you're waiting to get the feedback, right? Um, and that's if you're emailing joints, but then for the times. So the other strategy, let me, I'm, I'm all over the place. So just, just <laughs> bear, bear with me folks today. The, the other strategy for us at one point we were doing too, is we were booking studio time mm -hmm. and then we would invite said artists to come to the studio with us, you know, based yeah. on the studio time that we were booking. And we found that to be very successful in itself too. Um, because what we realized is that no one wants to pay for studio time, right? So right. no one, no one wants to pay for studio time. Um, if you have a pseudo relationship, you, sometimes you can offer that, that, Hey, I got some free studio time and, you know, come record the tracks. Um, what's dope with that is that you control everything. And that's what I was going to, that's where I was going to go with it. In those kind of cases, you control the narrative, you control everything you can create um different types of layered content videos etc because now you're in this situation social media pictures so forth and so on so now you kind of get all of those things that you wouldn't get by sending the beat out 
Um, right. And I think that kind of also can enhance your chances of getting things placed if you have a quote unquote pseudo relationship. Like say you've you know you've kind of had some email dialogue and you're in the same city, or you're going to be in the same city. You can always say, "Hey, I'm going to have some studio time. Can you pull up?" Some most some artists will take that. Um, will take that, especially the ones that are really serious and hungry about it. They'll right. take the they'll take those offers, and they'll come through. And they'll you know and what you'll notice is that they'll re- they'll record songs really really fast, and sometimes one placement can turn into three four placements at one time. That that investment is is definitely worth it. You know, and if you can get a a lot of a lot of the major studios also have smaller production rooms um, for for your budget. So it's it's even better if you tell them, hey, I'm working over here at this studio. You want to pull up and just the name recognition allows the artist to feel a little more safer and and coming through. Like they're familiar with the the studio and it's okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, I'm available, you know, this day or whatever. and I'll pull up. And to be able to offer that goes a long way, and it, it helps also with your professionalism. Like it's a, it's a good look for you as well, you know. Um, and and on top of that, the content that y- you you get because now you can, like Jug said, you could you could shoot uh, in studio series. You could you could even you know shoot a a, a quick interview, you know, get some photos, um, maybe even a, a quick a music video for the actual record that's 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 being recorded behind the scenes footage um there's just so much content you can you can get so it actually all pays pays itself you know what i'm saying so uh if you can do that then then you're 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 in a good space mike i don't have any context i don't know anybody i got all these tracks on my hard drive I don't know anybody. How, 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 how do I get people to hear what I have? Well, you know, there's no one way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get out there and network. That's, 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 that's one thing. Bottom you got to get, get out there. You got to network. You got to meet and greet. You got to <clears throat> do some research online, know who's who, who's the, who's the manager or where the manager is going to be at. Because a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of functions that's going on in the city. So you want to show up, you want to, you want to, okay, that's, that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so's manager. Let me approach, let me, you know, shake his hand or let me go over there. Hey, I'm so-and-so, how can I, you know, get some tracks to you and so forth. You know, a lot of times that's what we've, we've done. You know, I'll go online, I will look up who's the manager for this artist or who's the, who's the promotion guy, who's the marketing guy. It, it's just someone who's connected to the person and you work your way today. You meet the promote promo guy. You go to a, a networking event. Okay, I met the promo guy. This is the person's information. Maybe I want to I want to find out who the manager, who the agent, who this is. Go to the next event. Get that person, and have a network of people for that particular artist. So you know that okay, if this if this lane is a dead end, let me try this lane. Let me try this lane to get this artist. You got to be kind of relentless in your in your attack and trying to get to this artist you know working through this person working through that uh another thing you can do is if you have partners that's doing production as well you could team up with them you could trade contacts is something that 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 i've done you know this person is grinding and he gets this person's contacts i'm over here grinding getting this person contacts yo what you got oh i got this oh for real let's swap out and I've been able to double and even triple my network just using those strategies, you know, um, working together. You know, you cannot work alone in, in, in this game. And, Jug, you said it before. We said it in, in our prior our, um, our prior um, Last episode. podcast. Relationships. Um, relationships. Yeah. You got to utilize them. You got to develop them. If you're if you're saying, hey, I don't got any relationships, or I don't, I got all these beats and I got nobody, that's because you're not doing the work. You got the only person you can blame is yourself. That's it. You got to do the work. If you're sitting at home right now saying I don't got no relationship, I got nobody to send them to, I got all these beats in my hard drive, that's your fault. You got to get out there. You got to hit the networking events. You got to get a calendar. You got to get on the internet. Know when these joints is happening. Mark them on the calendar, know who's who, 
get to these spots, meet and greet, collect phone numbers, collect emails, and you got to build up your 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 roller decks. Build up, build up your network. You got to do it. Yep. Then you know all of this, all of this. Oh, I'm I'm antisocial, or uh, I, I'm a, I'm just a creator. I just want to make beats. That that alone ain't gonna cut it. You gotta get out there. You gotta date. You gotta meet and greet, shake hands, kiss babies. The whole the whole line. Listen, you know. Um, listen, I, let, let's. I want to give people some some background, right? Because in our in our in our journey. Mike has always been that guy, right? Mike has always been that guy who was out building the relationships, talking to these folks. So I had somebody in my team that did that because I didn't like to do it. <laughs> right? I didn't like that. I didn't like the the. I didn't like the the whole industry and this, and I, I didn't like that. I, I'm you know I'm a I'm a bronze guy. I just wanted to be in the joint. I don't really. I wasn't really into it. Didn't really realize how important it was to really develop those relationships. And, and once we transitioned to Atlanta and then I started to kind of see what was really going on and seeing the network, seeing how they network, they network different than New Yorkers network. New, York, New Yorkers were always siloed in terms of like, Hey, Dipset got their crew. Locks got their crew. G unit got their crew. And, they don't intermingle. Everybody has their crew, and that's what it was. But when mm -hmm. I came to Atlanta, I said, hey, everybody working with everybody. Right. Everybody networking with everybody. I said, oh, okay, this is how this one goes. And then what happens is if you approach people, they were a little bit more open to say, hey, take my number. That wasn't happening in NY. I was like, hey, talk to the manager or talk to the three managers down. Yep. And then we had to fight your way. To, to kind of get into the main person. But like you said, also, it's like if you have these beats and you're not, you know, so you have to learn. And and that was something that I had to learn. Like, I, I didn't like it. I had to get into that situation where now, OK, we're trying to build a relationship with this guy, this guy, this guy, talking to these people, starting to have lunch meetings, so forth and so on. And, you know, it wasn't something that I liked. But again, if you want your business to, to grow, like you don't have any choice. You cannot just sit behind the computer or the NPC or the, the machine and just say, I'm just going to make beats all day and somebody online is going to find me. That is bullshit. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's like, that's like winning the lottery, yeah. like lightning striking. Like you, you that is not going to work. So yeah. if you notice most of these artists even got in all of their bios, they all got emails to send yeah. traps. Yeah. Like you got to leave no stone uncovered. Like you got to send emails out everywhere. Send them out everywhere, but that's only half the battle. Like sitting in the studio, sitting in your room, your basement, whatever. Like sending out email, emails. That's just one part. That's one cool part. and all, but you got to combine that with your network. You got to get on the phone. You got to call. You got to get on the texts. You got to get out outside. You got to hit outside. the events. Yeah. You got to know who's who too. Like that's important. Like ain't nothing, ain't nothing worse than than being at an event and and your opportunity walks past you and you don't even realize it. He ain't know like who that's it was. Me. He ain't know who it was. Like you ain't know who that was. Yeah, like that was that was so and so who was looking for beats. Yeah, for his, well, for his so and so artist. manager. So and he so just, he just made a post yesterday. You didn't see that. You didn't know that that's so and so, and he walked right past you, or he was standing in front of you for the last ten minutes while you you mingling around. You gotta you gotta do your research. Go online, see who the manager is. Click the images and see what they what they who they look like. It's damn near stalking in a way, <laughs> but you just it's just it's just really knowing who's who, so that when you walk into a room, you're like, okay, that's so and so. I know I gotta go and and find a way to to talk to him. Okay, that's so and so over there. That's so and so's manager or that's so and so promos guy. He work at so and so label. All right, so let me see if I can go in over here and talk to the hey, I'm so and so. I'm trying to, you know, get some beats to, to to so and so. Do you have a beat email or something that I could I could send something to? And when when you say it like that, like you're not trying to over yeah, I'll send you yeah, here here it is. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I appreciate Thanks. your time. Yep. I'm gonna send something through and I'll just follow up with an email or text and let you know I sent it. Thanks a lot, I appreciate your time. Go to the next dude. Same thing, you know, run your run, whatever you spill that you got to run. But the, the key is you want to make sure that you leave with some sort of contact information so that, you know, you leave the night, 
it was a good night. There's going to be some nights you're going to have some thuds, but you can't let that frustrate you. You got to say, okay, the next event that I need to rock is this Thursday. I got to make sure I look presentable, look decent, I ain't, look, I ain't looking crazy. You know, get there and do my thing. So by the time, by the time the end of the month pop up, you know, you got a roller deck full of people that, okay, I'm going to send all of this stuff out to or who I can follow up. And you could continuously keep doing that. And you're going to see your roller decks start getting large. You can get networking start getting big. There's people who are going to call you back. There's people who ain't going to call you back. Well, you just keep it pushing. Is that, it's, it's, that's all you got to do. You got to keep networking, keep meeting. So, so that that leads me to 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 something that you know um, that we were doing. Remember, we were doing a lot of these showcases, and we were judging showcases for for a while. Uh-huh. And I, you know, once a month, I would just go judge a showcase, just to kind of me and some other um, guys who may be in the industry, other producers, etc., mm-hmm. and DJ so forth. And I would go to these events in Atlanta, and I'd be like, I mean, I'd be out there, and I and it'd be a room full of independent artists. Mm-hmm. room for the independent artists and we would be the judges on one side and then you know but everybody had access to us before the show would start you know you only had like maybe a handful of maybe like maybe one or two people that came to me and said hey i'm such and such can i get your information if i want to send you music so you can review it or you know so forth and so on like nobody did that you know why because a lot of people think that the talent they can stand alone on the town alone that and, and that that ain't enough. That ain't enough. They like thought that. they could get up on they could get up on the showcase, blow you away, and oh, they're gonna holler at me now. That ain't that ain't that's that not ain't enough. It. That ain't enough. You gotta you gotta you gotta get in front of it. You gotta go out there and shake hands. You know you gotta find out. Okay, this is who that's who, that's so and so that's so and so. You gotta introduce yourself and let yourself be known on a, on a on a personal level. You know. Mm-hmm. That's that's the real that's the realness because what 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 people don't want to realize is that no one wants to do business with people that they don't know and like. Like that that's, goes back, that's, that goes back to another podcast that like, we spoke about. Like, like like it's it's so important. So like so there was a handful of artists that would come introduce themselves, have the right energy, ask questions, mm-hmm. right? But because you got to think about it, what's the reason why I'm there? I'm I'm there. I'm looking for. I'm looking for it. That's why I'm there. I'm not there. If I didn't want to be there, I wouldn't come. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm there. I'm looking for that next person. I'm looking for that person with the right attitude. I'm looking for that person with the right music, the right work ethic, the person that really, you know, has the right energy, right? But if everybody is stonewall and wants, like you said, wants to jump up on stage and think, you know, do their best future impression. And that's what was happening for a lot, <laughs> right? Yeah. But that's another that's another episode. Yeah. But you know, no creativity. But what was happening was they weren't networking. They weren't networking with each other. That's another thing. Network that's another thing. Other. Network with other independent. You weren't networking with each other. Yeah. Right? You could help each other grow each other's fan bases. Yep. Like they didn't even realize that. So you you weren't working with each other. You you didn't realize that. Okay, I might have this guy over here, and you might have this guy over here. We might be working on independent things, but when we cross collateralize, then the magic can happen. Right. Like you like you kind of said like, hey, you know, there was times when we were working with um, when other producers were asking us, hey, how do I get the pun? Right. I remember, I remember that. Like, how do I get the pun? Or how do I get to this one? And you'd be like, I got you. And then you're switching contacts. Like yep. you know, and and that's what was happening. So that you you know, you was going from one loud, and this one was getting over the Def Jam, and we, you know, all of a sudden you cross, you know, you cross collateralizing, and I just think people are not really looking at that, and we're talking about that network and trying to get your stuff placed. Like it's so important to, to have that relationship and to be open just to this talent. Like, talent. I'm gonna say it like this again: talent alone is not enough. You have to network. It's that is that is that is that simple. You got to network, and not just. And then you got to look for ways to increase your network. Use the cheat codes. Use the hacks. You know, if another if another another indie artist is networking, network with that artist because what happens is then network becomes your network as well. Yeah, like that's the real that's the reality of it. But I think everyone thinks like it's all a competition, and it yeah. is. 
But you know? yeah, but to, to an extent, but you gotta utilize what's in front of you. You gotta utilize like you gotta network. Like there's no there's no way around it. You know, this this game this this game, this music industry is like a high school cafeteria. The cool kids are over there. The geeks are over there. The, so, the, <laughs> the like, gangsters are there. the gangsters are playing dice the over, there. over there. <laughs> everybody's in their own thing, but everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows who's on. Right. Everybody could point and say, "Yeah, that's so and so. You want to go over there? This is the guy. So and so. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy who sells the weed. That's the guy who 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 has the fly whiz. That's the guy who gets the girls. Everybody knows each other." In high school, it's the same thing in the music business. Everybody knows each other, so all you gotta do is network here and here, here and here and there. Next thing you know, you 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 know everybody. You know who's who, right. and who you don't know, you pick up from the network. That's right. And you gotta, and on top of that, you have to be consistent with the network because there's new people entering the network daily. There's all new the people that there's new people that get into positions. Especially at record labels, those jobs, those A and R positions, they come and go very quickly. Yeah, like, a a circular, new, like a circular door. It's like a, it's you. musical chairs. This guy who was at Def Jam is gonna be over at, at Sony tomorrow. You know, this guy who's doing promotion here at Atlantic is gonna be at Epic doing this job tomorrow. Like it, it, you, you gotta you gotta keep up. You gotta be in your 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 your, your internet searching, looking at all of these music business magazines that's online knowing where everybody's going all the musical chairs at the at the end of the year i'm going to say this at the end of the year uh there's a lot of musical chairs going on there's a lot of uh execs that move to other labels so you got to look out for those things like around november i start looking around like okay this guy this guy moved to that label or that guy moved to this label he's the new head of so-and-so at this mm -hmm. at this company right you got to know these things and you update your 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 your, your roller deck you update your contact oh you know there's plenty of times i'm going to my contact i'm like oh this guy ain't there no more but i, I noticed he's over he's now the head of that or over this. there now now yeah. he's upgraded and i'm gonna upgrade my joint and because i formed a relationship when he was on this level now when i contact him and he's on that level we already we already in a good space because i've been in communication with him when he wasn't even up there so he's like, oh yeah, Mike D, yeah, I'm here, what's up? Come through. I've already had a relationship when he was just a regular salesperson at this job. But now he's the head of black music over at this net, and I already had a relationship. Come through. There it Network. is. Network. So, so one more pivot before we step out of this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a new producer. Mm -hmm. How do I know my music is ready for the big time? <laughs> that's a that's a that's a tricky question you know that's a very tricky question um oh well, i think i'm hot bro i'm hot like i'm so hot i think but... i think i think the only thing the only thing you can do is number one you're studying um you're 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 you're, you're play, putting your music matching it up against other producers but at the end of the day you just got to go in contact and put those put that out like you can't sit around and be scared and uh, doubting yourself. It's only going to be as hard as 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 you what you put into it. You know, it's, it's, it's funny that you say that. It, it's you know, it's it's, it's yeah. You got to kind of test the market a little bit. You know, you right? gotta you, you gotta. I think you gotta just go for it. You yeah, know, like because you could sit and you could sit and doubt yourself forever. You know, um, of course there are obvious things as as far as you know. And a lot of times, you know, when we're doing our reviews of um, beats, and a lot of times people will send us beats to review, and, you know, one, uh, uh, one of the things I would mention in the reviews is, you know, um, make sure that it can compete in today's market. Like, make sure that quality-wise, it matches with the records right. that's being played. With the records being make played. sure the sounds that are being used is up-to-date that it works in today's market. In today's market even if it's old school drums just make sure that it the quality of it sounds right and fits good for today's music that's and what's out there right. you know they they ain't, they ain't nothing like you know i've heard records where i'm like damn that 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 i could tell what what i could tell what 
software they use for that one. That one is so old. Nobody's using that. That, that, that sounds all cheesy and cheap. Yeah. That, that don't sound good. And 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 I think I think I think I want folks to realize that is that when you like like one of the the things that you can do to say okay have my music ready again it's like like you said it's like sometimes get to somebody who can listen to it for you right mm-hmm. or because now the marketplace is different when we were coming up there was no one to bounce it off of right. it was we couldn't go online and say hey can I submit my music to you can you listen to my Pete Rock can you listen to my track. Before I send it out, that didn't exist, you know. So like now you have a situation where you could actually reach out to people who are actually doing things, and they can actually give you some professional feedback. Before yeah. that didn't exist, you know. What I'm saying that like people can give you professional feedback, and then in our situation when we were uh, giving out that feedback, we will always be listening for music to, to kind of get people. How do we get you to commercial viability? Right. How do we get your music to, like you said, compete? commercially what was coming out right because once you can kind of get your music to the level to where you compete now it just turns into a grind game right right now right. it turns into who can network the best who can get out here who can make the relationships the best but but getting this music to that level um sometimes does take a little bit of help and sometimes it does get, it's, it's going to say okay you know i'm using the software i'm looking at all the tutorials i'm doing all the stuff that i need to do but sometimes it, you need that extra ear to say okay Here's this. Listen, yeah. that's not it. That may or may not be it. Like, come on, let's 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 try to get you to where we need to get you to. But you can't do that alone. That's true. Because I've 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 you know I've done some reviews, and you know I will tell. There was one case I remember specifically. There was one producer, but his sequence was was dope. But I was like, the, the sounds you're using is just so dated. Like, it was almost embarrassing. I was like, dude, you can't use these sounds. Like, this, 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 this ain't it. Like, this, this, this I, I, I can't place this. Like, right. it was, it was a producer who wanted help placing, and I was open for it. But I was like, I can't place this. this I can't get it to match anything that's out there. Like, you know, I need, I need, I need it to sound like this. I need you to use. Those drums are, are, are flat and dead. You need you need something with a little more bottom in. You know that melody that you're using that's not going to work. Those sounds haven't been used since the the eighties. It's not working for for this particular what you're trying to do. Right. You know, and after you know you know some back and forth a little bit, we was able to get his sound to to uh, to sound a whole lot better. And even he was impressed with. Uh, the way it turned out, and he was like, "Yeah, I like it even better than I like." Wow, you know, he played it for other people, and you know, I, I believe he got a placement. Um, I forgot what project it was, but you know, it, it, it sounded a whole lot, lot better from the original. And I, I was pretty stunned at how the, how it came out. But my whole point is just it has to, you know, it has to to kind of match a mirror quality wise. You know, I'm sh- I'm not saying. You got to copy or bite. You know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the quality. We're talking about it's, it sounds uh, modern. It sounds today. It sounds like, okay, this is fresh. This is new. This is dope. Versus uh, it, it, it sounds like something that was made um, way back in the days and it doesn't give you a, a, a good modern feeling. You can't right. compete. You know, I can't give this to any artist today. Because you got to realize that what you're doing today comes out tomorrow. Right. And I think people have to really, you have to, a lot of this music, you have to think advanced. Like you can't, like, you know, yeah, you kind of want to make sure that you're good in today's terms, but you now you have to try to anticipate where it's going to go in the right. future, you know? And, and again, today's, today's production is tomorrow's release. So, you, you know, for, for us as producers and songwriters, you know, we've always been tasked with being future of or forward thinking individuals or forward thinking creators because right. you're trying to create the trend. You know, you're trying to create the next trend or the next level of culture and trends in the game. You know what I mean? So I, I think as a producer, that's one of one of your jobs is to find that sound that's going to take it from here. For yeah. yeah, you know, um even if you take sounds from back in the days 
but you got to take it so that it moves forward. It, it has to sound like, oh, this is something that's like, I love what, what Griselda is doing. Oh, like, yeah. That, that like, stuff doesn't sound old. Doesn't sound old. Even though in your mind, <laughs> you, you know? would say, in, in your mind, like if you've, if you've been around that era and we've been fortunate enough to produce in so many different eras, Right, because like you know, nineties, two thousands, or two thousand tens, and now you know, we're like we're, we're fortunate to have been through these eras. It's like it sounds like it was, it sounds familiar, but it's not the same. Right, right. So that that's that's what I mean that they gotta sound like today and yeah. and, and, and and move forward. And it feels fresh, you know what I'm saying? Especially like you know, and I, I love it. Like I I love it. It's like you know it it it. It's what the game needed. And when I say, like, you know, with Benny and those guys, like, it's what the game needed. The game needed um, some diversity. It needed some some high-quality stuff, but didn't mm. sound the same. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, it's it doesn't sound the same. Like, and there's no knock to what folks was doing trap-wise. I love the trap stuff and everything so forth. Drill. Like, I just like that. It. I, I like to see the things... Like the this guy lanes. is doing this, this guy like is doing that. Yeah, I like the yeah. different lanes, man. And I think that's, um, you know, producers, man. Like, figure out what lane you wanna you wanna be in. I mean, you could you could be in, you know, a master of all lanes. That's nice. But you know, you know, figure out what what lanes you wanna you wanna be in, and 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 you know, work on those lanes, and and um, do the do the do the research you need. You need. And and take that sound and, and and push it forward. That's our job, man. We gotta take the sounds and push it forward, you know, for the culture and for the to inspire the next. You know, if you're not doing that, then you're not doing your job as a producer, man. And you're doing us all a disservice, you know. And then the last thing that I don't think that we touched on, but we have to give people the full amount of game, right? And I have to say that's full disclosure. You have to be prepared for the rejection. Yes. You have to. You have to be prepared for the rejection and you have to be open to the feedback that you may receive. This is this is a game of, uh, as my man uh, Sean Baker coined, coined it, you know, you're in a business of no's before you get the yes. And just because someone says no, that doesn't mean that you aren't good enough. Like, someone saying no could have nothing to do with you at right. all at all at all like like there's so many other factors that go into play before it, it, it could even get to you you know there's so many scenarios that happen and uh it it doesn't mean that you weren't good enough it doesn't mean that your music wasn't popping or whatever you know it could just simply it could just simply mean that this artist you know already has a bunch of producers that they're using Something as simple as that. Something as simple as that. Yeah. Like, you know, and, you know, business-wise, they'll rather work with those artists because maybe they're getting a, 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 a kickback Percentage in that of, situation. Yeah. So they, they don't want to necessarily, you know, it's it just so many different things. So I would always suggest don't let uh, a no um, make you feel any ways. Don't let it slow you down or stop you because, look, We've got plenty of no's. And I'm going to be honest with you. If we didn't get some of those no's, you guys wouldn't have heard some of the records that came out. Because because the no for one, one guy. One person's no. Became, was another person's yes. Yep. And As a matter of fact, I'm grateful for some of those no's. Because <laughs> the, 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 the songs they be, ended up becoming for the, uh, the next artist became something pretty huge. Yeah, became classics. And, and, yeah, they became classics. And if you've been following us, you know what, what those records are. If you've been listening to our podcast, checking out our YouTube, seeing our, our tweets, you know the history of some of the stories we've told about certain records were made for this artist. And they said no, and and, and, it, and it went to, to the other artist. Or you made it to for one project. Mm-hmm. And then they get to another project. And it ends up on another project. Right. So that, you make it for one project no that you had no idea. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and you know, we talk about that at length, you know, um, in different situations where we 
gave it to an artist for one project for their mm-hmm. album, and then it didn't make that album. But then you know they got another got one artist on the side, and then right. they made it into a into a whole nother situation. You know what I mean? And you know, um, we'll go in depth into that in another episode. But but don't the, but don't be disgruntled. Don't get frustrated. You just keep pushing forward, man. That's that's this game is for uh, the person who is dedicated, the person who is ambitious, the person who is consistent, persistent, and just won't take no. You know, we'll just keep pushing. And if you're a person that just can't take a no and reject this game, it for you. You got to be able to. You got to be able to shrug this thing off, and and you know, you got to have such a such a a strong uh, a confidence level to you. And you just gotta keep pushing forward. And and I'm not saying that you should be arrogant or be full up in the head, but you gotta take these things and be like, that's all right. Cause cause all I need is one. <laughs> It'll you change know, your life. It'll change, change your life. life. Yeah, change okay, I got fifty I got fifty no's, but all I need is that one. That one is gonna make them the fifty no's look look crazy. Yes, that's right. And once you have that one, you just build on that one. Go for the next one and the next one. And then you just get yourself into a nice routine. I love yeah. it, man. That's yeah, the Architect man. Beats Music Business Podcast, man. Like, yeah, man. Come on, folks. I, I, I gotta put some. I gotta put some uh, some uh, uh, claps behind that one. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, what? You know? But um, listen, folks. If 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 you don't follow us, make sure that you're following us at uh, uh, Architect Beats on all the major platforms. Like on every platform from LinkedIn to Facebook to Instagram to TikTok. So we're we're everywhere. Um we're gonna be giving out this game, man. And and what we're gonna also start doing is we're gonna also start doing some more uh, live music reviews. And this it'll be for yes. producers and for songwriters and you know, different music reviews. You just have to um ensure that the music is yours. Right. <laughs> right. We don't want any copyright flags. But um, for the most part, we want to start doing some live reviews, start giving some feedback, you know, in our, on our platform so people can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. What's the thought process behind it? And how do I get how do I get my music uh, to a different type of commercial viability? And how do I know I, it's ready for for, you know, being out here and, and mass consume? I know too many things that we're seeing is that people are just kind of throwing it against the throwing it against the wall and see what sticks and for in some cases that works but that can take a lot longer than you know getting the right feedback really early making the right adjustments and getting back into the game it can really shorten your time frame in terms of you know how 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 much faster can i get to where i need to go right you know it's always easier to do it with a mentor or a guide this it's always yeah. easier. It's 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 not something that you want to do by yourself. Um, I I, I would have, I would have probably chopped off my right arm for a, a mentor when we were starting. Like, right. like when we were starting, everything for us was so trial and error. Right. And I, I I would have damn near yeah. I would have walked to to, to get cheesecake five times over. To Look. be able to be in that kind of position, like you know what I mean, and there's no knock to them, but just right. you know, just just that's how bad I, I I wanted you know the entry into this situation, and now everybody has the access, and no one's not using, and people aren't using it as they should, and it's it's kind of weird, but you know. Look, if you got questions, if you got questions or topics you want us to address on our podcast, um, just feel free to hit us up. Let us know what's on your mind. And uh, we could turn it into a topic of discussion. Man, yeah, shoot us a answer, DM. Answer, your, answer, answer, answer your, your questions. And, and, you know, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of uh, people who claim that they have some sort of skin in this game, you know. But, um, you know. And not, and not really the true experience that we may have. Because the experience right. that we have is is twofold. It's one from the producer standpoint, but two also from the executive standpoint, because again, you know, working at the major label and being part of that machine, like, you know, that that's that's also a two tiered approach. And some of the people that we're going to try to pull on the podcast are also going to be those folks that have that duality that also have been producers, songwriters and also executives. You know what I mean? Like 
you you you're that's you have a full circle of of what needs to happen in order for people to be successful. It's not the same as if you're just a producer or you're a guy that makes beats and then you read some books and then you know we're we're, we're online and now we're an expert. Like you have to you have to have some experience in this for real and have to be able to really offer some really sound advice. And I don't think there's enough of us doing that. So I think this yeah. is what this platform is for. Absolutely, absolutely. But that's well, what we got for you today, folks. Yes, sir. Until next time. Peace. Peace out, y'all. Be safe. Architect.